Not only is the Mariana Trench the deepest oceanic trench on the planet, it's also home to some of the strangest and creepiest animal life as well. Nightmarish fish with fangs so large they can barely close their mouths, microbes that burrow into dead animal carcasses, a vampire squid that can turn itself inside out. These are some of the most disturbing deep sea creatures in the Mariana Trench. The barrel eye fish is a very unique but somewhat eerie looking creature found in the Mariana Trench. Its nickname is the spook fish, and you can probably see why. At first glance, it kind of looks like its eyes are on the front, but they aren't. It has a transparent head, and through this transparent head, you can see this pair of glowing orbs. Those are actually its eyes. This may be one of the most unique looking animals I've ever seen, certainly the strangest looking fish. The barrel eye is a deep sea dweller living in the dark depths where sunlight barely reaches, like the Mariana Trench. And they they have see-through heads. Inside their heads are big tubular eyes that point upward, not something you see every day. If that's not weird enough though, those eyes can actually rotate. So if the bear live fish wants to check something out above it, it can swivel its eyes up. They usually do this to catch prey drifting down from above. Now, as for the rest of their body, it's pretty streamlined. They're not exactly speed demons, but they've got a sleek design for life in the deep sea. These fish were first discovered in 1939, but they were hard to study because they live so deep under the water, their bodies would actually collapse because of the change in pressure when they were brought up to the surface. But now that we have remotely controlled deep sea vehicles, they've become a lot easier to observe. There are a lot of large animals lurking in the Mariana Trench, and this is because of a phenomenon known as abyssal gigantism. This is where creatures living way down in the deep sea, like the Mariana Trench, grow way bigger than their counterparts up near the surface. One example is the giant amphipods that have been discovered down there. If you don't know what amphipods are, they look kind of shrimp-like, but these giant ones can hit a whopping 13 inches in length, which is massive compared to the shallower water versions. And some other deep sea dwellers down in the trenches, like certain types of jellyfish and squid, also follow this trend of growing way larger than their counterparts nearer the surface. As to why creatures can get so big in the trench, some theories are that it's because of the extreme conditions down there. The pressure at the bottom of the ocean is insane, and the cold and dark environment might be making the creatures evolve to become giants, a way of adapting to the tough life in the deep sea by becoming supersized. The telescope octopus is a ghostly looking animal. It's pretty much entirely translucent, aside from its eyes, which are strangely tubular. They protrude out of its body almost like telescopes. This allows for wider peripheral vision so it can avoid predators and locate prey. Even cooler though, the telescope octopus has this nifty trick where it can almost disappear. If it feels threatened or just wants to be sneaky, it can wrap its arms around its body, turning it into this smooth gelatinous blob type thing, blending into the dark background of the deep sea. Even though they have this ghostly translucent look where you can see the insides of their heads, there's something beautiful about these creatures and the way they just peacefully glide through the water. It's, it's mesmerizing. Next we have the Osadax, which is a pretty cool creature but kinda nasty at the same time. On top of that, they look like something from another planet. They have a few nicknames, bone worms, zombie worms, and bone eating worms. Pretty ominous by the sounds of it, but these guys are basically underwater recyclers. These worms have adapted to bore into the skeletons of dead animals, particularly whale carcasses, to access the fatty lipids locked inside. They were first discovered at a depth of 10,000 feet. They've evolved to thrive in the extreme conditions of the sea floor. Their main source of food is the remains of dead whales and other animal carcasses that sink to the ocean floor. The success of zombie worms relies on teamwork, with the females taking on the majority of tasks. Using acidic secretions, they drill into the bones of dead animals, freeing up all those valuable lipids. This involves a symbiotic relationship with bacteria as well that aid in the digestion and processing of these released lipids. This allows the zombie worms to make a living in the deep sea environment where food sources are pretty scarce. 
Next on the list, we have the goblin shark. These have to be the most horrific looking sharks in existence, right? I mean, goblin sharks, it, it's really just a perfect name for them. Just look at that. I'm, I'm like, yeah, that's, that's, that's a water goblin. They have elongated, flattened snouts, almost like they have swords sticking out of their faces. They have a, a pinkish white coloration and their skin is actually kind of translucent. You can almost see their blood vessels underneath. Combine this with their long, sharp teeth that just jut out at odd angles and you've got a face that only their mother could love and even that's a bit of a stretch. Goblin sharks also have the ability to thrust their jaws forward to snatch their prey almost like the uh, xenomorph in Alien. Take a look at this. The angler fish. These are those uh, super deep sea fish with the uh, bioluminescent lures that hang in front of their mouths. In the Mariana Trench, various species of angler fish have been found and they're all pretty unsettling to look at. One of the strangest parts about certain species of angler fish, though, is how they mate. Males are significantly smaller than females and often have a completely different role in the reproductive process. When a male finds a female, he latches onto her body and eventually fuses with her, becoming this permanent reproductive partner. This allows the female to have a readily available mate, and this is very important because encounters with other anglerfish are rare. The deep sea environment they live in is just so sparse, so they gotta take what they can get. But let's talk about those jaws. They're huge, allowing them to consume prey much larger than themselves. Their jaws can also extend and their stomachs can stretch, allowing them to engulf prey whole. And to top it off, anglerfish are known as ambush predators. Many of them are dark, helping them blend into the abyss and avoid being seen by prey and other predators. Next up, we have the vampire squid. These are really cool looking creatures. I think they may be my favorite type of squid, even though they're not actually squids. I'll get to that a bit later though. Anyway, pretty clear how these things got their name. It looks like it's wearing your classic Halloween-y vampire type cape. Batman squid would have also been a good nickname for these things. Like I said, despite their name, these things are actually not true squids. They're more closely related to octopus and they belong to a distinct order of cephalopods called the Vampyromorphida, and they're the only living species found in this group. All the other creatures that were once in it are now extinct. The vampire squid has a gelatinous body covered in photophores, which can emit bioluminescent light. It also has webbing between its arms, which creates that kind of cloak-like appearance. This allows the squid to control its buoyancy. The coolest thing about vampire squids, though, are their defense mechanisms. They can turn themselves inside out, covering their bodies with spines, and this helps frighten off predators. Next on the list is the fang tooth fish. You can clearly see how this thing got its name. This thing is horrifying. It's small, only reaching about six inches, but it has that fearsome set of jaws and a pair of dead white eyes, making for a pretty intimidating little creature. I'm sure it still wouldn't be fun being bit by one of these things. They're almost like a uh, zombie fish a little bit, the way their eyes look. Plus those teeth are so large that the fang tooth can't actually close its mouth completely. They're disproportionately large compared to their body. Their dark coloration, usually a deep brown or black, allows them to blend into the darkness of the deep sea as well, making it easier, of course, for them to ambush their prey. As scary as they look though, they're mostly feeding on smaller fish and zooplankton. An interesting thing about the fang tooth are their unique swim bladders. Unlike many fish, which rely on their swim bladders for buoyancy, fang tooths have a reduced swim bladder, which helps them remain stable in the extreme pressures of the deep sea. This next one is actually pretty cool, plastic eating microbes. There are some really strange microbes living deep within the trench. Scientists have found some microbes able to survive deep in an environment with intense pressure and just pitch black darkness. One pretty remarkable discovery among these mysterious microbes is a type that actually has the ability to consume plastic. As wild as this is, it's actually a good thing because plastic pollution has become a pretty big environmental concern. Finding microbes that can break down plastic is kind of a good sign. It could potentially assist in reducing plastic waste in the ocean. Mariana Trench, reaching depths of over 36,000 feet, makes for pretty extreme challenges for life. The pressure at those depths is intense, equivalent to about a thousand times the atmospheric pressure at sea level. This goes to show how adaptable life can be in the most extreme environments. 
Finally though, we have the deep sea dragon fish. This is a group of bioluminescent fish that lurk deep in the Mariana Trench. And what a horrifying looking creature it is. This thing looks like, uh, you know that hallway monster in Hellraiser that like runs along the wall? Reminds me of that. These guys have long fang-like teeth and elongated bodies, incredibly menacing, sort of like a piranha and a serpent fused together. These ones are also, again, bioluminescent, producing light through chemical reactions in their bodies. They use this bioluminescence not just to navigate the darkness of the depths, but to lure prey and communicate with each other. The light can be emitted from various parts of their bodies, helping them to camouflage against the faint light from above, making it easier to surprise unsuspecting fish. They also have an excellent sense of smell, which allows them to detect food from a distance. Once they identify their prey, they strike quickly, using their sharp teeth to capture and consume. So with all that said, I've been your host, James. I'll catch you, yes you specifically, in the next video.